There we go. She's closing bell on Wall Street. Let's check out how we finished out this week. It's been largely a pretty solid week. We talked about the CPI data earlier in the week, bank earnings today, and then possibly really turned on the University of Michigan consumer sentiment number inflation expectations. Pretty solid best since April 2021 in terms of the one-year outlook by the consumer. And there's your finish. The Dow gaining 0.3%, 112 points. The S&P's up. 0.4%, the NASDAQ also rising 78 points on the day. Shana? All right, let's take a look at Delta because earnings were out soaring above expectations in the fourth quarter, but the airline continuing to see headwinds after trimming its guidance, also citing profitability concerns. Here to discuss, we want to bring in Savvy Scythe, Raymond James, Managing Director. And Savvy, when you take a look at the reaction here, some bit of concern from the street about what we saw from Delta. Fourth quarter numbers, though, Look pretty solid to me. What do you think? I think the fourth quarter number was a solid and, and it definitely beat expectations. I think it was the first quarter. And if you look at it, the, the revenue and the top line commentary is really strong. So I think there's a little bit more of an optics issue here where some in consensus in the consensus figures had costs uh, that had the pilot deal. Some had it partially for the quarter and some had it for the full quarter. So I think the, the reaction here is a little bit more to do with optics than, than reality. Also, if you take a look at their 2023 cost guide, it hasn't changed, but the quarterly progression uh, was a little bit different than we were thinking. And so I think it's more optics than, than a really kind of disappointing update here. Yeah, really just a lot to do with that new pilot contract that has not been ratified by the union yet. Ed Bastian saying he's never seen a more constructive backdrop for the industry. What do you make of that statement by the CEO? Look, I, I think if you look at third quarter 2022 and or the second half of 2022, um, the airlines have fully recovered the, the fuel price increase, which has doubled versus 2019 even though you have several components of demand that haven't recovered. Uh, you don't have a lot of large corporates is still coming back. Some of the long haul international demand is still coming back. So with these demand the kind of avenues still recovering and showing good progression on recovery, I think they feel like the setup is pretty good. Um, obviously, you know, what everybody's worrying about is, you know, what the macroeconomic uh, front will bring uh, with some of the layoffs that you're seeing and with, with what the Fed is trying to do, which is slow things down. But as it stands today, I think everything is looking quite strong from an airline demand perspective. Savi, so that's Delta's story. I know you also cover American Airlines, and we saw the stock pop earlier this week, hiking their revenue and their profit outlook. The position that American is in, comparing that to what we've seen from Delta, how do they stack up? I think, you know, all these airlines are seeing a pretty similar environment. What I would say from a kind of a legacy carrier, American, Delta United, they're all benefiting from the fact that you still have long haul international that is recovering. You just started to see Japan open up um, and a lot of the Pacific markets are, you know, finally in the fourth quarter and, and into the first quarter are recovering nicely. Um, and, and you heard Delta today talk about uh, South America, that's uh, deep South America that's starting to finally recover and, and show good momentum. So this is really good for these legacy carriers that have international exposure. So I, I think the American revenue uh, beat in the fourth quarter was stronger. Uh, but generally, I think they're all seeing a very positive uh, environment here from a demand perspective. Admittedly, you know, with one to th three months of visibility versus what investors are worried about. Yeah, all of them facing a couple of headwinds, including deliveries and supply chains and pilot shortages. Do you expect those to clear in the year ahead? Yeah, for the, the latest carriers, I think the big thing is a training bottleneck as, as it comes to pilots. You're, you're, you know, you're trying to train, uh, you're hiring four times as many pilots as you've hired in the past, and, um, and the training footprints have been kind of slow to expand. And it sounds like we should, as we head into the summer, be fully caught up, at least at the kind of the large airlines here. Um, so that should start to ease. You're right about the supply chain. I think that's going to take longer. If you listen to uh, the various OEMs, it sounds like something that's going to continue into 2024. Um, uh, paradoxically, I, mean, I think that might be good for the, the uh, industry because it will hold back capacity, um, especially in an environment where you might see some demand softening as well. Savi, let's talk about Southwest because I know you cover the stock. Certainly has been a rough couple of weeks for the company as they're trying to win back the trust and really consumers who were delayed and maybe never got on those flights during the holiday week. Talk to us just about the brand damage that you think that you think Southwest is facing right now and whether or not you've changed your outlook on the stock as a result. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not good. And, and brand is something all these airlines, uh, you know, protect jealously. And so it, they've definitely um, taken a hit here. What we've seen historically, though, is that consumers tend to have short memories. I think it will be important that Southwest doesn't repeat this again this summer. But as long as they kind of get the act together and, and make sure they address this going forward, I think we'll, we'll see that for the most part, collectively, we'll have shorter memories um, and, and the brand will, over the longer term, not, not be as impacted. But they do have to take steps to make sure that they, this doesn't happen again. Yeah, estimate an $825 million hit, uh, half of that due to lost revenue in those 16,000 canceled flights. Given what we saw from American and Delta, expectations for United, who will report next week. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think you're going to see a similar commentary about a kind of strong revenue environment. Uh, again, they have greater exposure to international, and, and that's the area that's recovering. So we, we expect a kind of pretty good setup here. Uh, we'll, you know, they, uh, similar to American, they hadn't updated their fourth quarter guidance. And so um, there could be kind of a, a potentially stronger environment there. You saw both Southwest and American um, having some rebookings from maybe Southwest customers that help offset the damage from the storms, uh, their, their own kind of revenue loss from the storm. So you might get that similar offset. So it looks like a pretty decent setup. Again, the question for United American is when are they going to get their pilot deals and, and when, when is that going to get reflected in numbers? No question about that. Every pilot is empowered right now to renegotiate with their union. They hold all the cards, so those salaries certainly going up. Savi Saif, Raymond James, good to see you. Thanks so much. Enjoy the weekend.